Joining me now, three of my favorite radio talk show hosts in Kansas City, Chris Gall, KCMO, in our Washington, D.C. Bureau, Joe Madison, Sirius XM Radio, here in New York, Joy Brown, colleague at WOR, I am proud to say. Joy, Thank great you. to see you. Uh, let, let's start with the Daily News in New York reporting, uh, my gosh, that former Vice President Dick Cheney was furious with George Bush for not pardoning Scooter Libby. And, I, and, and that story break on the day uh, when obviously Ramos and Campion come out of uh, 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 prison. Your thoughts, Joy? I think uh, Cheney and Bush have probably been mad at each other for a lot longer than just today. My understanding is they didn't speak for most of the last several years. Isn't that the sense that you have? Well, I, my sense of the thing is, uh, frankly, for so many years now, I haven't cared what either of them really <laughs> did. But uh, Joe Madison, your thoughts? I, I agree with you. I really don't care at this point in time. I think his sentence was commuted, if I'm not mistaken. I guess the pardon would probably have to do with him being able to practice law uh, later on. But the thing that apparently upset Cheney, and we'll talk about it tomorrow, is the fact that uh, they, did it, they didn't do it because of PR reasons. Uh, so, you know, it's, we've got bigger issues than Speaking whether of Bush is upset with uh, yeah. Yeah. Cheney. Pick, uh, speaking of bigger issues, uh, President Obama signs a uh, $800 billion stimulus package that we now know will come to about $3 trillion with debt servicing over the next decade. Uh, how's he doing? Uh, this We're celebrating today his fourth week as president. Yeah, Joe? and 17,000 troops just got sent to uh, Afghanistan today, by the way, Lou. God bless every last one of them. Interesting pick of a day, wasn't it? I, it is a tough one, uh, but you know, going to that issue, Four weeks in office, uh, this man, whether you agree with him or disagree with him or his policies, I mean, he is putting on a powerhouse uh, performance here. He's not sitting around. I mean, as someone said, it's now become his war, number one. Number two, with the stimulus package. As far as I'm concerned, we talked before about uh, recovery.gov, so you can at least see where the money's going. I want to know specifics. I mean, I think that you can, you can toss around the rhetoric. You also notice that today any bipartisanship sort of evaporated. So much yeah. for everybody pushing together on this one? Well, you know, I, I haven't seen much of that partisan, no, there, that, uh, that bipartisan was elusive. Anyway. That was elusive. Never existed. Not yeah, unless it, you're three it, no, Northeast no. Republicans. No, it, 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 <laughs> well, it, it really doesn't exist at all. And I think this is more of a recovery plan than it is a stimulus plan. Now, I'm trying to push, as you know, Lou, something called SaveOurEconomy.com. And I'm hoping that Congress will do for mortgage holders what they did for mortgage bankers on Wall Street. We've been pushing for a, a to Congress to enact a 12 month um, mortgage right. holiday for businesses, farms and, and residents. And let me tell you, you could put about a hundred billion dollars a month into the economy. Now that's stimulating the economy and people really need to take a look at it. And I hope that President Obama does. Well, we've got a, we've got a solution coming tomorrow, ostensibly a $50 billion solution, which uh, seems somewhat inadequate since we've lost $6 trillion in our housing industry over the course of this crisis. Uh, but turning to do today to the automobile workers, uh, the, un the automobile workers union, uh, the UAW uh, c agreeing apparently, we haven't got the details yet with all three car companies, the two run by the U.S. government and, and Ford. Uh, and we're also hearing from General Motors and Chrysler tonight that give us your money, but we're going to cut 50,000 jobs. That's over $3 billion a year in lost wages in Detroit alone. Do you know, Lou, I, I may be naive, but that sounds to me almost like blackmail of, you know, okay, we got you to give this much money, uh, but now unless you give us more. And I've been, as you know, I deal with people talking about right. problems every day. And Michigan is one of my major stations. And people have been unemployed, having marital problems, having financial problems, worrying about what do I do with my kids living at my house and with their, their grown children. That there seems to me to be, I mean, you guys can explain this to me. When I'm going to bounce a check, I know it. I mean, how can two states of today said that they were running out of money? Today, how can that, that be? That, that, there's no question. That's a Joe Madison question. Well, uh, uh, how could that... 
Well, and, and let me tell you, I, I lived in Detroit for uh, 20 years. My, I, I married there. My, my, my children were born there, at least three of the four. And, and I just think it's absolutely awful. This is about jobs going, and you talked with the governor, going overseas, going out of this country. I don't think auto workers should lower their standard of living to try to compete with people in other countries. It well, why, is absolutely why we absurd. Even, you know, the truth is, we're going to talk about more than auto workers. Because the fact is that that's precisely what the elites of this country, as I've been saying for years, are doing. They don't want right. to compete with, as on the CEO level. They don't want to co uh, compete financially. But they want the middle class in this country to compete with the cheapest labor in the world. I'm going to be back with Joe Madison, Chris Tegall, and Joy Brown here next. But first, coming up the top of the hour, Campbell Brown. Back with our panel now, Chris Tegall, Joe Madison, Joy Brown. Uh, Joy, uh, Governor uh, Palin's daughter out talking about abstinence today? Well, no. No, she said she wants to now go around apparently to high school students and talk about not getting pregnant as a teenager, an unwed teenager. And her mother suggested abstinence. She says it doesn't work. I want to know what she's going to suggest. I want to know if the C word like condom is going to be part of her uh, her discussion. I want to know specifics. Stimulus, unstimulus. I want to know specifics. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the M word will be part of the discussion. Like marriage? Or morality. Morality. How about mm. B word values? <laughs> any about, room for any of that stuff? How about stuff? S word sex? How about H word hormones? Well, I, I, I think mean, that I think brings we gotta up be a little realistic. I'll, I'll, I, I, I would love to be. I just think that we ought to be all inclusive in our discussion. I, I hate right. being exclusive. <laughs> no, no, no. I think, uh, I think me, all me, of the above. Let me let me turn real quickly uh, uh, to, to your state, uh, Chris Gall, is bankrupt. Yeah. What are you doing about it? I feel sorry for you. Oh, by the way, shocking you and, news you today. You and Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, right. A shocking news today. Uh, apparently, George Bush and Dick Cheney don't march to the same tune, and a teenage daughter disagrees with her mother. There's a huge headline for the day. Uh, now to real problems of the day. My governor's bankrupting the state of Kansas. Kathleen Sebelius was forced to sign off on a bill that basically reduced spending. She had no choice. It was either borrow more money, which she couldn't constitutionally do, or reduce spending. And shazam, a bill was signed 11th hour today. People are going to get their income tax refunds, and government workers, until this hour... Right. We're not sure they were going to get paid at the end of the week, Lou. It was a disaster, and I never thought I'd see it in Kansas. And, well, and Lou, and rationality Lou, thing, or, or, or balancing the, or balancing the, the budget? Uh, reduced rate of spending. And I'm not cutting. I, don't, right. don't listen to budget cuts. It's I a reduced get, rate of spending. Gotcha. I, I, I want to add, yeah, and real quick, I, I, Lou, I want to thank you for what you did with the, for those border patrol. And, and I'll tell you, this is what media really should be about. Uh, all of us in this business we call talk radio have a responsibility yeah. Yeah. not just to do news but to activate people to take <laughs> action and you really need to be congratulated. I'll probably lose half my audience for saying that. But. That's all right. You know what? <laughs> but, but, you know, but you're, you'll, you're you'll have back another <laughs> half in 15 you. seconds. That's very nice of you, Joe. And it's one of the reasons yeah. I'm very proud to be uh, your colleague as talk radio show host. And I thank you all three for being here.